Shalom brothers and sisters. So let's talk Israel. And what I want to do today is I want to show you from four completely different news sources, four different stories over the course of the last three days, and how these lead one to the next to the next. There's a knock-on effect as this thing goes down. And if you look at them and you piece the pieces together, you see the bigger picture here of what the world's doing against Israel and where the stance of evil is at the moment. So, number one, Republicans double down on Israel's support. Democrats become even more anti-Israel. Trump warned that Israel is under siege politically. Today, there is a revolution against Israel within Congress. The Senate is not what it used to be, but at least it's still there. But in Congress, they hate Israel with a passion. They've convinced a lot of people that Israel is a bad place with bad people. Something has to be done. If this had been 10 years ago, they would have been sanctioned, even some Jewish congressman. Schumer is not good for Israel. After two and a half years in office, Biden has yet to invite Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to the White House. Netanyahu was re-elected six months ago, and the snub is conspicuous. Now, yes, whether you like Trump or not, those are very on-point things to raise. And it's interesting now, and, and I'm not covering that. We'll get to that at another time. Now Biden's made a phone call. Why? Because Beijing reached out first and wanted to visit with Netanyahu and talk relations in the Middle East and everything. And Israel let America know, because America is her partner, that she's going to take up this offer and chat to them. Now that Beijing's involved, now suddenly... Biden's making a call and trying to see if this relationship is repairable. I personally don't think it's repairable. I think that ship has sailed and the true intentions are there for everyone to see. Moving you straight into story number two. Outgoing U.S. ambassador approved $1 million of support to delegitimizing Israel. How, how is that even... <laughs> Bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And you wonder all the bad things happening in America at the moment and stuff like this is going on from the realms of power. Nidus, the outgoing U.S. ambassador to Israel, personally signed off nearly $1 million in grants to fund investigations of Israel for documentation of legal or security sector violations and housing, land and property rights. That was Adam Credo in the Washington Free Beacon. Nidus approved the U.S. State Department to provide $987,654 for organizations accusing Israel of human rights abuses. A congressional investigation last year centered on these taxpayer-funded monies, with critics claiming it fit hand-in-glove with the BDS's movement tactics and objective. As a policy matter, it is wholly unacceptable for the State Department to fund NGOs to delegitimize and isolate Israel. At the time, Senator Ted Cruz said that the Biden administration was using American taxpayer money to subsidize the international NGO campaign to demonize and isolate Israel. These funds also went into all these protests you're currently seeing against the judicial reform. The ambassador's involvement in the funding effort is certain to attract congressional scrutiny as Israel's defenders on Capitol Hill worry that the Biden administration is alienating the Jewish state. They are. Absolutely. The Jews aren't stupid. They can see exactly the writing on the wall and what's going on and where people are leaning. It's very, very clear. Next one, Netanyahu vows crackdown on military no-shows in judicial protest. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged to crack down on Monday against threatened no-shows for military reserve duty by opponents of his judicial overall plan, saying such actions were anti-democratic and risked emboldening the country's foes. Remember that. <clears throat> With the Religious Nationalist Coalition set to ratify a key reform before Parliament goes on summer recess on July the 30th, the opposition has stepped up their protest campaign 
and there have been threats again of reservists to refuse call-ups, including pilots. This government won't accept insubordination. The government will act against it and will take all necessary steps to ensure our security and our future, Netanyahu told the cabinet. We cannot have a group within the military threatening the elected government. <clears throat> if you do not do as we say, we will shut down security. No democratic country can accept this dictate. So they've got the funds now, the people that are trying to break Israel down. Those funds are busy driving this whole protest action amongst many other things that are against Israel. And now you've got people in the military, reservists and things which are essential, saying, well, then we're not going to show up for duty. And I've discussed this before. You, you don't have that right when you're in the military. You don't get to say, I'm willing to follow, the, follow these orders. I'm willing to do my duty under these circumstances. You're in the military. You're supposed to do your duty. It's how those things have always worked until now. And when the world sees this, they're like, oh, great. We can attack Israel. There might not be enough pilots that day because they're leaving the duty because of the protests. There might not be enough tank commanders that day. All these things slowly but surely add up, which will bring me to the final story that links it all together for you. So that brings me to the third story. Hezbollah gearing up for a showdown with Israel. Under the guise of the battle over an Israeli border barrier, the Lebanese terrorist group aims to preserve its option of invading Galilee while serving Iran's interests and establishing a foothold in Syria. Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, is promoting the deployment of his forces along the border, with over 30 observation posts in place already. Lebanese sources suggest the group is readying itself for a prolonged conflict with Israel, which it believes is gradually accepting new rules of engagement set by Nasrallah. Recent incidents include a tent that you've heard about, manned by three to eight Hezbollah terrorists in an area south of the border but north of an Israeli security barrier near Mount Dorf. Here the border converges with Syria. They put this tent up on the Israeli side. The tents are a few hundred meters from a Hezbollah border outpost on the Lebanese side of the border. The encampment is not near any Israeli community but is in an area where the IDF regularly operates. On Saturday, a group of 18 Lebanese people, including one parliamentarian, crossed the border before the Israelis chased them back with warning shots. In the past week, Hezbollah managed to steal surveillance equipment mounted on an Israeli tower along the frontier. You can actually go see these video clips on YouTube. It is crazy that it was even allowed, that it even happened. As tensions escalate, Lebanon has backed Hezbollah's claims, rejecting any negotiations with Israel over the border. Al-Akbar, a Lebanese daily close to Hezbollah, reported on Saturday that Beirut demands that Israel recognize the border established in 1923 and withdraw from the village of Gahar. Nasrallah's recent remarks further emphasized warning and inevitable escalation if the situation is not promptly resolved. So now they're making demands for land. Hezbollah has in the past year constructed no fewer than 27 military posts all along the border in preparation. Hezbollah perceives Israel's social divisions over the government's judicial reform initiative as a sign of of weakness. Add to that military personnel refusing to come when they need to come. Add to that the chaos in the streets and the split that seems evident taking place in Israel and they smell blood in the water and weakness and they think now's the moment that they can rise up and crush Israel when she's not looking and they're preparing. Border posts, military posts, everything. Crossing the border, stealing equipment off Israeli camps, and they're getting away with it at this stage. They should have been crushed long ago, but it's working. So they're getting bolder and bolder. More and more of Iran's proxies are preparing. Russia's got a stronger and stronger presence in Syria. All these things are stacking up together for what we as Christians know is lying ahead. 
But now again, like I was saying, you can see how one thing leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to where we're at, at the moment. But fortunately, while we're still here, we will pray for Israel. We'll pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we'll keep looking up because we have never been closer. God bless and shalom.